Well, how do there, Charms Tazai, Captain of the Steves. And today, Charms, is a cup of tea with Captain Steve. And we're going to be talking about Star Wars Outlaws because it's now appeared for wish listing, pre order, and all sorts of wonderfulness. Plus, also, it's got a new trailer over on the old PlayStation D5 store. So let's go and hit it up and have a look, shall we, people inside of the view of us? Chicka pow pow, chicka boom boom. Here I am on my plastation. You can see there it says $69.99. And do I want to wish list it? We get into that after we watch the trailer. Let's have a look at the new trailer, people. Each of you represents some of the most powerful criminal organizations in the galaxy. Pikes, Crimson Dawn, Huts. Cool. It's a golden age for the underworld. The Empire controls every corner of the galaxy, but they're distracted by a rebellion that won't quit. Remember Stormtroopers? Yeah, I need me! Nice. It's an opportunity to make millions. Sounds good! K Vess, the underworld's favorite new scoundrel. We meet at last. What do you want? <laughs> you and Han shot Greedo? Yeah, I remember Greedo. Oh, I remember Greedo. Remember? Okay. It's Eric Besh. They're new, rich, and lethal. You crossed their boss, Sliro, and now he wants you gone. Hmm. Rob his fortune, buy your freedom. This job, it's a death wish. I'm in. Out here, you live and die by your reputation. You want to survive? Know the players. Into the cantina? Oh, I know. Remember Star Destroyers? Yeah, I love Star Destroyers. You're new to this world. What's your problem? Come back when you're not. Daba, right? Look, don't try anything. I got a whole crew surrounding the. Okay, we're skipping that part. <laughs> For about as long as I can remember, it's just been me and Nyx. Remember Chewbacca again? Oh, I love to remember Chewbacca. Oh, remember. Doing what we have to to survive. This job is my one shot at freedom. But if we're gonna pull this off, we need the right crew and the right ship. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Hi. Uh, because you were one of the best hunters in the Outer Rim. The Cloud City. Remember IG-88? The bounty hunter droid? Remember? That was fantastic. She's more connected than you let on, Sliro. Bess is mixed up in something bigger. The Outer Rim is a dangerous place. Everyone is fighting for their piece of the galaxy. Remember TIE fighting? Oh. But all I want is to live free. So I'm gonna risk it all. Hold on, Nick! Oh, Sarlacc Pit. Yeah. Whoa, what the fudge? Star Wars Outlaws pre order available now. Uh, trailer ends in a giant sandworm. Right, okay. Cool, yeah. So that's Star Wars Outlaws. There's a few stills here. Now, something that we haven't really seen in that new trailer is gameplay. Now, we have seen gameplay footage. It's not on the PlayStation, though. It's over on YouTube. And you know what? The gameplay looks quite lovely. The weather effects look awesome. The actual pace and speed and pop-in seemed great inside of the gameplay footage that we saw from Ubisoft. Um, am I a fan of Ubisoft games? Some. Some I like. I, funny enough, I like Starlink Battle for Atlas. Um, there's a couple of other UBI titles that I do like, but a lot of UBI soft titles feel very hand-holdy with, like, you know, pop-up icons everywhere where you need to go, what you need to do. But you know, a lot of people like that sort of stuff. Do I like the main antagonist? There's been a lot of sort of you know, to and fro in on that one. I kind of see her as kind of rogue-esque and yeah, fairly, fairly okay with the character. But I, will, I like games where I can make my own character or at least have a choice of two different chat characters. You know, I play as Captain Steve. I ham it up a bit and I try to interact almost like I'm in the game. When you are forced to play a female lead, it kind of 
takes away from that. I, I approach games differently, and I probably will have to do the same with this. It's like when I played Fenrix Rising, which is another UBI game. and I, I kind of liked that. It was all right, apart from I got a bit tired of the same old, same old puzzles by the time I reached the later levels. Now, Fenrix Rises is probably a good comparison with this in a roundabout way, because when you pop into here, you start seeing that there's a standard edition. Lovely. All right. Cool. 70 freaking quid yeah fenrix rises was extremely expensive on launch as well and then fenrix rises did something very similar with like season passes and early access at a higher price it wasn't 104 freaking pounds but the highest tier on fenrix rises was pretty darn freaking eye-watering high when that dropped we're talking a couple of years back but here it looks like they're almost trying to sell you some kind of bundle deal there which almost looks like it could be considered as day one DLC. And to hold that back from players and put it under a different price bracket is freaking insane. I mean, this one gives you a season pass and three day early access. Well, I can guarantee you that pretty much every main content creator on YouTube is probably going to get given early access anyway, probably even before that three day pass, because that's what happened with Fenrix Rises. And you're going to see a shed load of spoilers, previews, and even reviews before you even get your free day early access. So I don't think I'm going to be porking out for this one. I think this one I'm going to be sitting on the side rails and I'm going to be looking for those reviews. Because part of me thinks that this is just going to be another UBI soft game with a Star Wars skin, is what I'm thinking, people. And as much as I liked that trailer and it made me laugh at certain points, which is great, that's all great, as long as it's entertaining, I want to know how much gameplay we're getting inside of this. For it to be £70, I'd like to hope that we're going to get at least 70 hours of story content in there. 70 hours of playtime, a pound a minute. Is that too much to ask? No, I mean, that's how much it costs these days to get a freaking tattoo, isn't it? A pound a minute, roughly there or thereabouts. In fact, a lot of high skill trades will charge that. If it delivers 70 hours worth of decent story, I'm not talking about padding, filling and freaking CGI and all that sort of stuff. I'm on about joypad in the hand, playtime and not sitting for a load of freaking waffle like um, Starfield. Starfield's storyline was just, oh my God, I... It, I play Starfield to fall asleep. Okay, cool. If this turns out to be a Starfield type S outing, no, no, I'm definitely not going to be picking it up. I'm going to add it to the wish list though, just to keep an eye on it, just so I get the notifications of when it's coming up. And I'll see if there's any sort of hype or additional gameplay footage, because at the moment that was all freaking CGI. This hasn't given us anything really all too new to delve into. I mean, I did like the voice acting. The lip syncing works well. The facial expressions work well. The actual alien models are great. I quite like all the voice actors they've chose. The cast seems okay. Does it make the world feel believable, breathable? And also there was a couple of member berries inside of this trailer. Yeah. Remember Moss Eisley? Remember the Rancor? Remember? Remember Sand People? Remember the Cantina? Remember it? You know, the whole Jabba the Hutt and having Carbon still in uh, solo in the Carbonite. So we roughly know where this is placed. You know, this is just before, well, Return of the Jedi-esque type area, isn't it, really? In between the two movies there. So it kind of makes you think, oh, are we going to see some cameos from some of the characters we know and love? Well, we've already seen Jabba inside of this trailer, which is interesting so hopefully he's got a rancor in his freaking pit we saw sarlacc pit in there as well so there's a lot of member berries member berries where they make out that you know, a lot of these franchises these corporations now pull on nostalgia get you to buy things through member berries yeah if i can find a little clip of it i'd stick it on the screen so you know what the fudge i'm on about but yeah it's a uh, it's one that's on my radar but it's on my radar to watch for reviews and previews, find out more about it and whether it's really the game for me. It could be that in this trailer we've seen some of the best laugh out loud moments and we've seen some of the biggest action sequences. It could be a yawn fest. We really don't know. We don't really know what get, what planets are even in there. Do you get to go to Kashyyyk, for example? You know, what about Dagobah? You know, what planets are in there? What sort of systems can you go to? 
And uh, how customizable is that ship? I mean, she wants to get her best ship. I like that. That's the seat rising up, though. That is quite funny. Yeah, th th there were some little bits in there that I was like, all right, OK, maybe this game deserves a chance. But then there was other bits in there that I'm like, oh, I don't like these tactics. And then when you see the pricing model, it really does make you think, hmm, that's a little bit pricey for what we're seeing there, people. Anyways, let me know what you guys think inside the view of us. Sound up inside of the comments. Let me know. Are you going to be picking this up on day one? Are you going to be pre-ordering this? Do you trust UBI's model? Do you like UBI soft games? Go to town. The game that I'm really looking forward to from UBI soft is good and evil too. Beyond good and evil too. That game looked great because it's got the whole sort of flying from planet to planet. It's got decent sort of uh, character. A little bit. She actually looks a little bit like the character in this one, saying that, to be fair. But it looks like you've got a choice of either playing as her or playing as some sort of mutant monkey guy, which was pretty cool, especially if you like PG Tips. I love PG Tips. I like a good breakfast brew. Talking of breakfast brew, I've got my own breakfast brew, people. If you want to try the captain's brew... Um, it's actually from a UK store. If you do want to get it overseas, you can always try emailing them to see if they'll ship it. They might come to some sort of arrangement for you, depending on your order size. I don't know. But yeah, it's worth a try, isn't it? But anyway, people, thank you very much for watching this video. And yeah, like I say, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Are you on the same bench as me? Are you just sitting there warming that bench and taking a look with your eye peepers, taking a listen with your ear holes before you go and dip into your freaking wallet on this one? I'm a little bit hesitant because the price tag is so hefty. If it, if it comes with the amount of gameplay I'm hoping that it does come with, then perhaps I might pick it up. But if it's just padding and waffle just to hit that threshold, no, I won't be picking it up. The last Star Wars game I played was Star Wars Squadrons. I played it in VR. I quite liked that. It was quite good. You know what? I've got a playlist on that. If you want to see it, go hit it up over there. Some of the story was a little bit... Ah, Make up your own mind when you watch it. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.